Welcome to Project Pack number 11. This is day four. Ooh. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and uh, I'm going to show you a little something new and old at the same time. We're going to mark off on our Marcus Operandus. The, so you're going to uh, do both sides and Both sides ends. and up and down. And yeah. So... You'll be very familiar with this after uh, at the end of this project pack. So, right. so my purpose in doing this is that those lines will be there, not that you're going to plan what you're going to do, but in case something comes up that you can use those lines as mm -hmm. a as a uh, like focus, as a reference point, or, yeah. well for focus because that's that's really what you w right. you're looking to do is is to focus on those lines and in those spaces. Um, and, and I like the idea that they're there, very light. I'm, I'm uh, going very light on that, but you can see it. And um, I'm not sure what, I, I think I, when, I, when I did this tile, I, uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, <laughs> came at it with, that, I mean, that's I That's even better, yeah. So it's like, okay, here is this, here's this special place on this uh, piece of paper. So and I couldn't go through a whole project pack without doing some mooka, but I thought, well, I'll do a, a different mooka. And for those of you who have had uh, difficulties with that tangle, I know that people have a love-hate relationship with it, but once you get to know it, you, you use it all the time. So this is just a different uh, uh, approach to mooka. Um, and I know that everybody can do this shape here. It's such a simple shape, and I'm, I'm automatically throwing in a little, a little um, highlight, highlight there. there. And then I'm going on the inside of the loop. Now, the inside of the curve. And if you can sh remember to do that, you're all set. And I'm going to aura all the way around, starting at that uh, dark uh, shape at the end. So there you have a mooka without a lot of uh, right. difficulty. Uh, and I and that's I, so funny because when I first saw it, I'm thinking, "Oh, it's fescue with a uh, with an aura." Well, and, I guess and, it could be, yeah. But that's part of the, you know, I think some of the like magic part of uh, there's there's no like fixed edge between some tangles and another, and how you can. You know how they share, um, you know, tangled DNA or something like that. Well, I, they all do anyway. Yeah. They, they start to right. <laughs> inter intermingle. <laughs> um, yeah. So if when you're auraing this, if you can remember to start on the inside of the curve, but it's very graceful, don't you think? Yeah. It's and, a, uh, and notice again. I keep saying this. It's like, all right, Rick, yeah, turn your tile. But, yeah, turn your tile. So I started out at the bottom at, at one of the uh, uh, phi positions so that the, the stems are coming out there. And I marked off a little X where I thought that I would have, uh, you know, maybe a focus. So I'm going to... Just have this wonderful meditation here with these uh, mooka slash fescues, and um, and then just keep going until I don't want it to go anymore. Right. right. And I like how those stems come together because again, that if you uh, go back and check out a newsletter um, and also one of the project packs where we uh, talk about the the tangle hollis, that's the, the those all sort of come together in a similar way. So, again, we've got a lot of uh, aura going on and drawing behind. So drawing behind, right? um, what really makes it three-dimensional, you know, if, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, the more you draw behind, the, the more interesting it gets. So I'm going to start on the bottom. You can't see it right there, but you, you will. So now they're coming um, from another direction. And it looks like you're just uh, keeping that, that other spot available. Kind of open, right?
but still using that the idea of the uh, those starting points on the ends being that that phi ratio. So you don't even have to go all the way down to the uh, point of the the origin of the stem. Right. You can you can they branch off. branch off. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, you can see this graceful, almost, uh, it, it, it looks like Mucha only in that uh, Alphonse Mucha's uh, strokes were, were sort of like that, uh, that they went all over the place and they balanced on the, on the fly, you know. Yeah. Just. If you, uh, what we're talking about is the, uh, the artist, uh, like in the early 1900s, if you look up the name, it's spelled M-U-C-H. A, and just look at some of the images, and you'll see a lot of the, uh, particularly like some of the advertising where the, the, the female models had this long, like, flowing hair, and that was the inspiration for Mucha. Right. Um, Alphonse Mucha was a, a, a poster designer for then the theater Mm. You know, um, what's her name? Bernhardt, uh, Sarah, Sarah Bernhardt. Did a lot of Sarah Bernhardt. Did, yeah. did a lot of her, um, and he worked in the the uh, with lithographs, lithography, lithography. So most of his work were prints, and they were just gorgeous. Yeah. The the girls and the and the backgrounds and the and the, the colors. Oh yeah. yeah, and even though it was commercial. It had a, you know, he had a following as an artist as well, which was very unusual. Mm -hmm. So look at how complex this looks with the drawing behind, yet each one was, is just very simple and unplanned. So now I'm adding this uh, almost like support system. Like if you, if you had created, the, created this out of wrought iron, you would have gone in in these delicate places where they come together and added a little bit of a touch of metal to mm. uh, to to support it and i kind of like that idea you see it in illustration um line illustrations all the time where they add these uh, little bits of of uh, dark to give it more oomph to hold together i like that that look almost stained glass look and it's also you know it, it doesn't make any sense because if it's over and under I love that, that it's like an inner contradiction. So now I'm going to go in and put uh, a little focus here. I'm going to add uh, a uh, Bronx chair. And we're not actually covering anything with the Bronx chair, but I, I kind of like the idea that we can do it when there's no mistakes as well. And so we're going to put in a nice uh, raspberry in Just here. Just let people wonder what's behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love when when you draw those orbs there's this like going over it a little bit and just this uh, this sense of affection and respect for the line. I, I love watching that. So I'm, I'm actually going to draw this behind that little mucha thing there and uh, make it look like it, it, it wasn't a uh, uh, afterthought. So this is probably the first... Uh, uh, Bronx chair that's drawn behind. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so a little bit of a stem there. So uh, give this a little uh, moment while I'm doing this so you can see what I'm going to do right now. Is uh, put the stem in, right? And then I'm going to go back in... Um, in a moment here. It's just like it got trimmed off there. Yeah. Most people pick the berries without the stem, but we, we pick them, keep the stem on yeah. them. So now you can see I'm going to add more of these little parts of the berries around the stem so it makes it look like the, the stem isn't coming off the back but coming off the front. So you can see that. It's just a, a, a way of giving it some dimension. Some cool technique. So yeah. uh, I'm going to cheat here a little bit and, and add these little highlights, and then we're going to color in uh, everything but the highlight. So we've done this so many different ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every, every time I do it, I do it a different way. So if you uh, go back and, and look at some of the ones that we've done before, 
you'll see you'll see the the different approaches. But what's really cool about this is not only is she leaving that highlight untouched, but notice how she's leaving that little gap at at the bottom of, of each of those. So what that's going to be is like a pods. low light. If you, if you study a, a, a painting of a blackberry or or a, um, anything like that. You'll, you'll see highlights and lowlights on each um, even individual little part of the, of the structure. And what I'm going to do is go in and cover over that part afterwards. <laughs> so we're going to go in with one of the colors that I have. I have, I have the three colors. And um, I'm just going to uh, aura, but close to the edge, um, kind of heavy with this color, and then we're going to soften it by bringing it uh, to the middle, to the center, and gi giving it a, uh, a stained glass look. This is a really easy technique, and yet um, f very nice nice texture. And as she's doing that, I'm, I'm guessing th she's holding the, the pencil so that there's like a thicker edge develops, so you can lay <laughs> down quite a bit in one stroke. So you can see uh, you're bringing it out to the middle, but you don't want to do it heavily so that it becomes all the same. You want the, you want the edges to be more more paint, more um, more color. So even just that little part near the, you know, near the raspberry to the right of the raspberry has a little bit of te technique there, a little texture, light, now, light coming through. It reminds me of those uh, uh, like vases where there's a, a metal grid and the and the glass like bulges out around it. Oh yeah, yeah. So here I'm I'm going over that uh, part of the berry I talked about earlier, that low light, and and the red will you know you'll see that in the, in the red, kind of just you know something a little bit different. And a little bit of shading around there. The tortillon mixes the graphite really nicely with the uh, colored chalk, so mm. that's that's something you can you can play with and get all of these tones in the chalk. Not only mixing the chalk with each other, but also changing the light and dark. So here's my third color bringing in. And I'm going to do the same thing uh, as I did it with the green all around the outside. There we go. Okay. And I'm a little heavy-handed here, uh, but, but but not going any faster that if you lose you don't want to lose control. So. But you, you're putting down a lot because she's going to then take that tortillon like you see and just pull it away. This lovely gradation. No pun intended. And you can work this, you know, she's going it over it and then going back over it again and you can you can really spend some time on this paper with the tortillon. So what I want this to do is I want this paper to not look white. I want it to be the palest, beautiful pale blue, um, like on a, on a on a wintry a wintry day. Like on, the, on blue snow. Yeah. Like how yeah. snow looks blue. Yeah. So I'm going to go over pretty much all of the of the background just to make it not white. Well, and that goes to really pop out the the white of the the mucha slash yeah. fescue slash yeah. hollis. It's beautiful. So I'm going in now with a dirty tortillon because that's what I like to do, and what it does, what it's doing is that this one that had some blue on it. It's um, making the colors more complex. And a little more sophisticated. Mm. Uh, I love to work with a a, a tortillon that's already been used in other colors or with graphite on it or anything. Don't be afraid of that. See how that just brings it uh, into a more 
uh, approachable. Um, it's not so flat. And, uh, more yeah. organic. And see, she's would. going back and picking up yeah, some more um, there. You on saw, the edge. Yeah, just pick, go in right. where, where there's a lot of blue, and there I can uh, shade that w instead of with graphite. I'm shading it with the blue. And it's subtle, but you know, this, these little subtle things are, are, are what will come out, you know, make things come out. It's very charming. And tucking in that there. Yeah, I love working with colors that you have, because I don't know if you would have chosen those color combinations had those not just been randomly in the project pack. Well, it's more of the elegance of limits. When, when yeah. you're hand, somebody hands you three colors and say, OK, do this, right. you would never have thought of doing that. But, right. but now you have an assignment. Sometimes an assignment okay. is, is What can I do with yeah, this? Yeah, what can I do? Well, have fun with this. Yeah, and and uh, thank you so much for playing with us. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. OK, bye. Bye now. Have fun. See ya.